Praise the Lord, everyone. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 58. We will be reading verse 6. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loosen the bands of wickedness. To undo heavy burdens. To let the oppressed go free. And that you break every yoke. After the prayer of consecration, my best friend, the Holy Spirit, will be teaching you from the subject, fasting and prayer, the fundamentals. Father, I pray for your people that they would learn to master the fundamentals of prayer and fasting. Help them, Lord, to live a good life, to be full of the Holy Spirit and power, to defeat the devil every time they encounter him. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. There are three reasons why people fast in the Bible. We're going to talk about each of these three reasons in depth. And then I'm going to conclude by telling you the two great benefits of fasting. Number one reason why people fast. Fasting is a tool. It is a discipline to promote intimacy with God spiritual growth, and maturity. Number two, fasting gets immediate help from God. What is called a spiritual breakthrough. And thirdly, Fasting is an act of repentance, a humbling of the spirit, or a demonstration of grief. All right, let's look at each one of these in detail. Number one, fasting is a tool, it's a discipline to promote intimacy with God, spiritual growth, and maturity. Keep in mind, this is a weapon that God has ordained. It didn't come from man. The idea to use it didn't come from man. It came from the Lord himself. So you don't have to understand every detail of why it works. Just know it works. Man's mouth has always gotten him in trouble. The very first sin came from eating something he wasn't supposed to eat. So you have to understand, God is using the mouth, the discipline of fasting, 
to tame his spirit and make him strong. All right. We are in a loving relationship with God. God is our Savior. He's our Lord. He's our King. And just like human relationships, if you spend time with that person you really care about, let's say back in the day when you met and fell in love with a girl of your choosing. You wanted to do everything you could with that woman. You wanted to spend your time with her, spend all your money with her, take her to concerts, movies. You wanted to please her soul so that she would fall in love with you. Sometimes you would even sing to her. Good night, my love. Pleasant dreams. For tonight, my love, may tomorrow be sunny and bright and bring you closer to me. Oh, baby. Hopefully, she enjoyed your singing. But we did everything possible to win the love of that special someone. Well, it is the same in an intimate relationship with God. We spend our time with him. We pour our hearts and our souls out to him because we love him. And the more time we spend with him, God blesses anything that you give to him. The more that time is blessed and we grow in intimacy. We grow in knowledge. We grow in power and understanding of the king. In the Holy Scriptures, Hannah gave God her firstborn son. God blessed him and he became Samuel, the prophet and ministered to Israel for 40 years. King David gave God his newly city, his newly conquered city, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. God blessed it and it became the holy city. Oh, hallelujah. It's the holy city now, and it will be the holy city forever and ever. But do you see how God blesses the things that we give him? So we need to give him more of our time. In Matthew chapter 4, Verses 1 through 11, the scripture says, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, into the desert, the Judean desert, to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now, let me stop for a minute. In the Judean desert, there's nothing but sand and dirt, rocks and heat. 
So the only thing Jesus could have been doing is spending time with God. Archaeologists have discovered numerous caves in the Judean desert. Settlements that people lived in. Do you know what were in those caves? The word of God. People went into the desert to study scripture, to memorize the word of God, to grow in their intimacy with the Lord. This is vital. How much time you spend with God and the quality of that time will depend and determine your strength in the Lord. Hallelujah. Now Jesus was fasting 40 days. And when the enemy came to him, he was full of strength and full of power. When you fast and pray to the Lord, your spirit man is going to be built up. Your flesh, your appetite will be depressed and miserable, but your spirit man will be mighty, mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. We need to fast and we need to pray. After his fast, Jesus whipped the devil's butt. He crushed him in three separate temptations. That's what God wants to do with us. This is an example. Saints, Brothers and sisters, we need to get alone with God, fast, and pray for the building up of our spirit man, our spirit woman, so that we, when we confront the devil, we too can defeat him. Number two. Fasting gets immediate help from God. What's called is a spiritual breakthrough. Turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, it reads, It happened after that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazon, Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast through all Judah. So Judah gathered together and asked help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord 
before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, and you, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms and the nations? And in your hand, there is not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you. Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever? And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it is your name saying if disaster comes upon you the sword judgment pestilence or famine we will stand before this temple and in your presence for your name is in this temple and cry out to you in our afflictions, and you will hear and save. Now, here are this people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of Egypt. But turn them from destroying them. Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us into your, throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. Oh God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and children stood by before the Lord. The spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jeiel, -G the son of Mathaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, Listen, all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them, and they will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jurel. You will not need to fight them in this battle. Position yourselves, stand and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. an immediate spiritual breakthrough. God intervened to help his people. He gave them a helping hand that only he could give. If you want to defeat an impossible enemy in your life, you must fast and pray. In this current day, 
2020, there are protests going on throughout the United States. People are protesting racism. Racism is a spirit. Racism is satanic. The only way we are going to defeat racism in the United States of America is if we proclaim a fast and people fall on their faces before the Lord, turn down their plates, and let God move and defeat this enemy. Daniel chapter 10. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 10. <clears throat> Selected verses. In the third year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and the understanding of the vision. And in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or no wine came upon my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till the three weeks were fulfilled. Daniel had a vision he wanted a full understanding of the vision, for the vision was long, and the appointed time was many years in the future. So he went into a time of fasting and prayer to get an answer from the Lord. He ate no pleasant food. He ate no meat, he drank no wine, food that was pleasant to him, he turned it down. He didn't even wash for three whole weeks. This is how badly he wanted to understand the vision. Scripture goes on to say that an angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Daniel, you are greatly beloved by the Lord. From the day you immediately prayed, I was dispatched to you. But an evil spirit intercepted me and fought with me. And it took three weeks for him to get through. Sometimes we have to press in the spirit. Sometimes we have to pray and travail and break through to get an answer from the Lord. Hallelujah. But fasting and prayer is a weapon from God that works. Fast and pray for your husband. Fast and pray for your children. Fast and pray for your community. Fast and pray for the government of this nation. We need some prayer. Hallelujah. But when we fast and pray, the Lord will move on our behalf.
Number three, fasting is an act of repentance and a demonstration of grief. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, a very familiar verse. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. God promises to heal our land. But we have to humble ourselves, people. We have to get on our knees. We have to fall down before the Lord and repent. Why repent? Repent because we're sinners. Repent because there's no righteousness in us. Repent. Because we're fallible human beings. There's cursing on our lips. There's hatred in our hearts. There's sin in our character. God is holy. If we want to approach him, we have to repent. Say I'm sorry for all the deeds that we have done and be covered by the blood. Hallelujah. All right. One more scripture regarding fasting as a demonstration of grief and repentance. Turn to Jonah, chapter 3. The people of Nineveh were the Assyrians. And they had built a huge empire and had crushed many people, including the people of Israel. They had used excessive cruelty and Jonah hated them. He wanted to see them destroyed, but God had another plan. God loves all of us and he is waiting for Mankind to repent. So when God sent Jonah to Nineveh, he came with a message of repentance. He came reluctantly. God made him go. And here's what the word of God says. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose, went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three days journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day. Then he cried out on the first day's walk. Then he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. 
So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth and ashes. From the greatest to the least of them. Then word came to the king of Nineveh. He arose from his throne, laid aside his robe, and covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast nor flock taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way, and then the violence that is in his hand. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not be punished? And God saw their works and they turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster that he said he would bring upon them. He did not do it. Nothing more needs to be said than that. Fasting is a way of humbling yourself before the Lord and getting his attention. In conclusion, there are two things that fasting does immediately besides those that were mentioned. Fasting improves your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. When you get alone and spend quality time with the Lord, when you shut off the TV, turn off the telephone, Stop being consumed by local news and national news. When you go into your prayer closet and meet with God alone, you're going to become full. You're going to become rich. You're going to be built up in the spirit, man in the spirit woman. And you're going to develop a sensitivity, a strong listening ear to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So fasting helps you to improve your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Lastly, fasting changes your unbelief into faith. I'm going to say that again. Fasting changes your unbelief into faith. On one occasion, a man brought his demon-possessed son to Jesus and he asked him 
to heal him. And he said, Lord, I brought him to your disciples. And they could not cure him. Jesus said, bring him here to me. Jesus rebuked the spirit and cured him from that very moment. Later, the disciples asked Jesus privately, Rabbi, why couldn't we cure him? Jesus said, because of your unbelief. But this kind of spirit doesn't go out except by prayer and fasting. Some spirits you come against in your life will be so strong you need to fast and pray to rebuke them. But rebuke them you can. You are the child of God. You are operating in the name of the Messiah, Yeshua, the name of Jesus, the King. You are the victorious child of God. So when we fast and when we pray, our spirit man and our spirit woman will be strengthened and we can crush the enemy anytime we encounter him. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, that's it. You want a victory in your life you must fast and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless your people. Fill them with faith and let us be victorious in our war against the devil. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach in the name of Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. There are two excellent books on the subject. The first one is Fasting for a Spiritual Breakthrough by Elmer Towns. The second is The Power of Prayer and Fasting, 21 Days That Can Change Your Life by Marilyn Hickey.